Hello. Okay, so I just thought I would do a video. And what I wanted to do is just to kind of lay on the table why I think altered states and trance is important. So I run a few groups and um, we spend a lot of time working on altered states and trance. Now, you may traditionally think that um, the reason you would use trance or altered states is just to allow a guide to speak through you. Now, of course, that is what you know many people would traditionally think that is the sole purpose. But um, the more I've worked with it, the more I um, understand, you know, and I feel convinced by the fact that we are in an altered state. 24 hours a day there's no getting around it whether you do anything mediumistic or not we are just always in an altered state when i say altered state we're talking about an altered state of consciousness so consciousness is awareness when you're conscious you're aware of what's happening and when you're unconscious you're unaware like when you're asleep you're unconscious so i kind of thought about it and um i think to myself we often people are saying, you know, you're in an alpha state, theta state, delta state, gamma state. And yeah, those things are relevant. But for the average person, we can't quantify which of those states we're in. And if we get overly obsessed with, you know, what sort of state of consciousness via an ECG we're in, then, or um, EEG, I don't know, I can't remember now. Um, it could probably hinder us. So I kind of think to myself, why, why do I use altered states? And fundamentally is to really feel the connection that I have with spirit, you know, to feel the connection I have with my own guides, to feel the connection I have when I connect to your loved ones, if we're doing a reading or an assessment. And I thought about it and I thought to myself, do you know what? There's no um, aspects of mediumship, whether you are, say, a one-to-one -one reader, whether you are a healer, whether you do trance healing, whether you do psychic art, you know, the sort of thing that Leanne does, um, whether you do uh, physical mediumship, obviously that's a very rare aspect of mediumship, whether you do trance philosophy. If you think about it, all of those require us to be in an altered state of consciousness. They do. You know, we're taking our attention from the outer world to the inner world. We're taking our attention from our thoughts and our consciousness and our mind to that of a loved one. You know, rather than thinking to ourselves, what do I think about stuff? We are asking for the spirit world to impress upon us their thoughts, their experiences, and their essence. When I talk about essence, I talk about their consciousness, who they are as a person. So one of the exercises that you know we do in class is we have to spend time becoming aware of ourselves. I know that sounds you know crazy and you think, well, I'm always aware of myself, but are you aware of how you feel really? You know, so when we go into that quiet space, you know, when we allow our minds to not empty, because emptying your mind, I think, is a thankless task and it is a fruitless task. Because really, can we empty our minds? I don't think we can. I think we can quiet them. We can um, cut down the chatter, the internal dialogue that happens. But realistically, we can't empty our mind. So, when we spend time analyzing ourselves and we become aware of how we feel, you know, when we're quiet and we're, you know, nice and calm, then when we create a conducive environment for our spirit friends, let's just call them our guides and inspirers, when we create an environment for them to join us, then we can become more aware, we become more observant of the difference between us as the medium and the guide, and we become aware of this process of connection. 
where it becomes us and the guide together. Why is that important? So it's important really because if you don't feel a reaction to energy merging with energy, then how do you know that you're actually really connected? How do you know the truth of the, the essence of who they were? When you start to feel the presence of your guide or of a loved one, you will start to become aware of their mannerisms, of their personality, of their emotions. It becomes a very real exercise in experiencing the spirit world in a way that just having clairvoyance cannot give you. You know, it's fine to, say, see a picture of a, you know, a man or a woman, and you can ask them for information and, you know, get information and say, you know, they were six foot two and you know, they love to play, you know, football. That's great. But what does that tell you about their personality? What does it tell you to about how they feel when they allow their consciousness to blend with yours? You really get to feel it. You get to feel if they were quite an upbeat person. You get to feel whether they were maybe very deep in their thoughts. You get to feel whether they had a lot of sadness. And when you feel that sadness or that happiness or that upliftment, you can then ask them questions and say, okay, why do you feel this way? What is it that you wish to say to your loved one that will allow your loved one to become aware of um, that that really was the presence of their um you know, deceased relative. And of course, when we say deceased in the physical sense, but they're very much alive, this is kind of the message that the spirit will bring us, that they are alive. Death is a transition. It's not the ending, just the transition to another phase of existence. You know, you could use the analogy that, you know, when you see a caterpillar, that caterpillar has a consciousness. And when it goes into a cocoon, and when it emerges as the butterfly, the consciousness is still there, but it's changed its form. It's now the butterfly. You know, and I think that's, um, for me personally, I find that a very um, easy way to understand the transition of one form to another. Consciousness is there all the time. It just transcends to a different state of being. So that's kind of why, um, sort of very briefly, that I would say that where the value of altered states is, is that it allows you to feel your guides. It feels their con you feel their consciousness. You know, that's very important. It allows you to have real faith in yourself and in the validity of your um, contact with the spirit world. So when we are working with our guides and inspirers and we feel their presence, it allows us to trust. Trust allows us to have that faith that the connection we're making is very real. So what I want to um, do at this afternoon as it is here is I'm going to spend some time just going into that quiet space and I'm going to allow and ask for my guides to come forward and to speak. Um, I have no idea what they're going to say. So who knows where this conversation is going to go. But what we're going to do is I'm going to allow them to speak. And maybe you will notice differences, uh, changes. Uh, maybe you will feel, even beyond the screen, you will feel a difference in the personality that you feel is speaking to you. So it's just kind of a bit of a an experiment really just to see um, how it goes and what I'm going to do is in just a second I'm just going to come to the choir and we are going to see what happens so that is my plan okay so I don't normally wear you know if I was doing this trance because it's online um, I need this microphone because I tried it before with a different microphone it just didn't pick up the volume very well so um, it's not ideal. I don't like wearing a headset and having a, a wire trailing. But what I'm going to do now is just going to go into that quiet space. And we will allow the spirit world to 
dictate wherever the conversation goes. Um, you may even hear the dogs barking in the background, but um, they're just having fun. So, okay, we'll come into that quiet space for a minute or two and just allow it to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, welcome, my friends. Welcome. Yeah. Hmm. As we, as we make our connection with the boy, hmm. we allow ourselves and we are allowed to make a greater connection through the action of talking. As we take control of the facility of speech through the media, we are able to influence his thoughts and his mind through a conscious connection. Now, some of you may have heard that we take over the media. You may have heard that we, we place the medium into another room. It is not true. It is a connection, a conscious connection, a willingness to provide a space by the medium. And we share this space with the medium. We do not control him, we influence him. We, uh, we share a space where thoughts flow. And he allows us to do this because we have built a relationship. We have built an understanding based upon trust, upon friendship, but most importantly, we have built this based upon love. If you want to know why a specific guide works with you, it is because they love you, or at least they should. Now, when we, when we make these connections, we are not doing it for your benefit. We are doing it 
for the growth of a soul, for the healing of a soul. We are doing it because love exists between two people, and we will try to reunite them, or we will try to uplift you and give you guidance. When you seek guidance, we will not tell you what to do. What we are doing is we will make suggestions that may be for your benefit, but ultimately it is your choice. It is you who decides whether you follow a particular path. It is you who decides whether the circumstances of your life are agreeable with you. Do not come to the spirit world, my friends, and ask us to make the decisions for you. For free will exists. Free will is your right. It is what you have. It is your decision to be made. In the same way that you may speak to your loved ones, and you may speak to your friends, and you may say to them, you know, I am having a terrible time understanding what I should do. What do you think I should do? And they will give you advice. They will understand to a degree what you're going through. And they will attempt to help you because they love you. Now, we are the same. This is all we want to do. We may see a path that lies in front of you, and we may try to guide you. But my friends, we cannot make you do anything. You have to be the one that takes responsibility for your own actions. For you and you alone are responsible for all that you think, all that you say, and all that you do. It is your right and it is our right to refuse anything that does not sit well with you. The decision, my friends, must always be yours. Now, one other thing that we want to say is that when you are sitting with us, when you are spending your time with us, do not be fearful of failure. Do not be fearful that you will not succeed. Because, my friends, let me tell you, and as you make these connections, you will succeed sometimes. And other times, it will seem that you have no awareness whatsoever. The failure can sometimes be on our side. We are not all-knowing, all-seeing, wise people. Sometimes the communicator cannot make a link with you that will allow the information to flow in such a way that it will be recognized. So you have to understand that it is trial and error on both sides of the relationship. We are learning from you as you learn from us. It is a connection of minds. Our mind is impressing upon your mind. And your mind will take the information and it will interpret it. It will decide what it feels agreeable with and it will reject what it does not agree with. You have to understand that if you were to liken the connection of pure spirit is like a glass 
of clear water. And as it flows through your mind, your consciousness, all of your memories, your awareness, your prejudices, and your opinions will color that water. And if the water comes out of your mouth as the wisdom that is said by the spirit world, it will be colored, and it is now impure. Now, the time and the experience that you have with those that guide you, it will allow more clarity to come to the water, or the speech, or the evidence, or the connection, or the healing. Because you are getting a stronger connection to those that you work with. Do you see what I am saying? The action of practice will bring results. This is the nature of what we do. Now, is it important about who guides you? No, it is not important who guides you, my friends. Mm, okay, no. People get very attached to guides. They say to one another, I have the big chief works with me, and he is very wise. And other people say, well, I have a big chief who works with me, and he is also very wise. Now, those that work with you do so because they have a connection to you. It may be because far beyond your physical existence right now. What you have, my friends, is a great privilege of connecting with someone who has walked before you. Our connection is not about fame. It is not about being well known. Now we are here because we care for your development. We care about what you do. We care about what you say. Now you must be very careful in all that you think. For thoughts are living things, my friends. And you must never forget this. If you think it is okay to think something harsh about someone, it will come back to you. Let me tell you, it will come back to you. So you need to be very mindful of all that you think. When you speak something, speak the truth. The truth is who you really are. The truth is known through the vibration of the heart. If you claim to be a good man, but your heart is not, if it is full of anger and hatred, that hatred, that vibration, that energy, that essence, that is within you. And do you think that helps you? Do you think that you are serving yourself by having unkind thoughts to another. Let me tell you, those thoughts will affect you first. Those thoughts are a vibration, and they resonate to a lower frequency. So as you think these things, my friend, it is not going to affect who you are thinking about first. It is you. So say to yourself, do I really deserve to think unkind things? Do I really deserve to have that within my consciousness? And consciousness affects the physical form. So think bad things if you will, but you do not want to be sick. Do not allow yourself to be sick because of your thoughts. You have to understand that these are not meaningless things that just happen within your mind. These mean something, my friends. Let me tell you. Now, when you go about your journey, 
Understand that you may not agree with everything that is said and done. You may think that people are fools, and it may be true. But is it really your decision to change the way that people think? Or is it their own choice? Does free will apply to everyone? Or does it only apply to you? Does everyone have to follow a spiritual path? Or is it just you that you could and should concern yourself with? Now, some people, they will lead a life that is full of misery and mistakes, and it is their learning. Now, you could say at the end of their life, they will look back upon what they did and they will have grown in ways that you cannot imagine. So is it really so wrong to make mistakes? Is it really so wrong to do things that are against the grain of human decency? Now we cannot all be enlightened, but we are all on the path to enlightenment. My friends, as you follow this path, understand that you are so much more than you realize. You are so much more because you are an aspect of God. Now God resides within you. God is part of you. When you look at the world, if you see only misery, then you are looking in the wrong place. If you see disharmony, my friends, what are you going to do about it? Now, you may think I'm only one man or one woman. What can I possibly do that will make a difference? But think about Gandhi. He was only one man. Do you think he made a difference? Mother Teresa was only one woman. Did she make a difference? Now, when you think about your spiritual leaders, we are talking about the Buddha or Christ or the Prophet, Muhammad. They were in touch with God who exists as the vibration of love within them. Not love for a select few, but love for all. When we learn to love everyone, we learn a true spiritual nature. When we love all of those who roam the plains. When the people are the four-legged, the people are the two-legged, the people are those that fly and those that swim. They are all part of our nature. They are all part of the greater consciousness. And how you interact with the greater consciousness will decide your growth. Now, you have to understand that this journey is one of trial and error. It is one of success and failure. But we do not sit on a cloud above you, uh, admonishing you for your mistakes. You know, we walk this path together. We are side by side. We are not your masters and you are not our slaves. We are here with you as brothers and sisters under the gaze of God or the Great Spirit. We are here to help you on your journey and your experiences will be felt by all who you meet. We are all things. 
We are all consciousness, we are all children of God, of the Great Spirit. And as He dwells in us, He learns from us. Your mistakes will become part of my learning, and I will learn from you as you do from I. Now, manifest all that is good within you. Have love for even your enemy, for your enemy will be your greatest teacher. Wouldn't it be lovely if we were just angels playing our harps, sitting on a lovely fluffy cloud? Well, that would be jolly nice. But we aren't angels. We don't sit on fluffy clouds and we don't have harps and I don't have a musical bone in my body. No, that is not our purpose. Our purpose is growth through experience. It is raising our vibration through experience. As you become more consciousness, you become more aware of the effect of the ripples that your energy casts out into the world around you. You become more aware that you are not just the self. You are also part of the world around you. And you have an effect far beyond that which you may comprehend presently. Hmm. You need to understand that your thoughts will create actions. Become mindful. If you cannot say something kind, say nothing. If you cannot think anything kind, think nothing. Contemplate why you do not think anything kind and try to correct your ways. Now, my friends, there are many lessons that we could share with you, but time is not of the essence. It is time to allow you to take on board what me and my friends have shared with you today. Think about your connection to your fellow man. Think about the energy that you bring into yourself. Think about your connection to us. Understand that you must open your heart and let us in. You must open your mind and allow yourself to consider that which you do not yet know. For we are all on a journey of learning, are we not? We are all on a journey of understanding. And that is the beauty of the journey, that we are learning, that we are becoming something greater through our experiences, through our connection to God. As we raise our vibration, we become more conscious. And as we become more conscious, we become more aware of those that reside in our higher state of consciousness. And isn't it our task that we raise our consciousness to become more aware with every thought and deed and action as we live the experience that we call life? My friends, we wish only love for you. We wish that you could see the great love that lies beyond the experience that you call life. In reality, your senses are dumbed down. You do not know the true reality of where we exist. You get a brief glimpse. You see aspects of the world that amaze you. But let me tell you that the world is more amazing beyond the veil of life. Yet don't be in a hurry to join us. Learn from your experiences 
they accept failure and celebrate success. For these are the aspects of your existence that will allow you to grow. My friends, as you go on your journey, allow the most wonderful aspects of humanity to unfold from you. Kindness, love, respect, tolerance, patience, and humility. There are more, but we will allow you and we will ask you to go forward now and embrace all that is good within you and see all that is good within another. May the many graces of God or whoever you worship be with you. May they nurture you and nourish you. May you understand the true nature of your spiritual nature. My friends, we leave you in peace and love. Yeah, <laughs> my friends, it is an honor for us to share this time. When you create a sacred space that exists within your heart, many things are possible. Those doubts and fears that you have, do not be afraid. For we take them on together as we build a connection with you. And we ask you to go forward with happiness within your mind and within your heart. My friends, we thank you for listening to us. And we look forward to another time when we can share that love together. Ah, well. Okay, so, um, yeah, oh my goodness, I'm just taking time to focus. So when we um, make a meaningful, sorry, when we make a meaningful connection to our spirit friends, when we allow them to share that space, share that sacred space, you can allow them to share whatever philosophy they wish to share. Now, trans philosophy may not be your cup of tea. Um, it's not for everyone. You know, it takes a degree of, um, excuse me. It takes a degree of trust to allow that to happen. However, that connection with the spirit world, that is real. And that is something that you can attain. I'm not special being able to do this, not by any stretch. There's lots more I can learn and there's not lots more that I will learn. But what I know is that the more I work with spirit, the more I realize that this is a way that can positively impact all of our lives. I'm a much more spiritual person since I started on this journey. Yes, I make plenty of mistakes and I still have lots of work, lots of work to do. You know, there's always that human aspect of me, my mind, my ego. And when we talk about the ego, we're talking about the personality. Lots of things can upset us. The spirit world don't want to change us. At least they don't want to change us in a negative way. What they want to do is they want to help us make the most of our potential. So how do we know what is our right journey? You'll feel it within you. There will be an inner knowing that speaks to you. 
you know, you can call it intuition or whatever you like. When I speak to the students, I say, you will know it's right because it will feel right. There will be something in you that sits right with you. You will understand that it just feels like it's the right course of action. And as you develop, don't think that that is your only path. You may start off just working, you know, on the you know psychic level, and then you start to connect with spirit, and then you may want to try trance. You may want to sit to develop physical mediumship, but please do not go against the wishes of your spirit team. The reason I say that is because when you connect to the spirit world, they will understand where your potential really lies. You may think that you want to be a platform medium because that's kind of what we see a lot of on media. It may turn out you're the most wonderful healer. And so you need to allow the spirit world to influence you and to be receptive and responsive to their influence, to allow them to guide you. The reason they're with you is to help you make the most of your potential. This isn't about making you famous. You know, this is a deeply spiritual experience, I feel, in many ways. It will cause you to question your emotions, to question your values, to question those that you're friends with. You may change your circle of friends because as you become more conscious of the world around you, your thoughts change, your opinions change, you change. So I don't want to, want to talk too much more about it, but um, if you're interested in the uh, beginner's class to mediumship, that starts on the 23rd, so this coming Saturday, 23rd of January. If you're interested in joining my Altered States and Trance class, you don't have to have experience. You have to have a willingness to let go and to you know, try the stuff that I suggest and just to work hard at your connection. That starts on March the 7th. There are spaces available. Um, not many spaces, but there are. So please get in contact with me. It's either on Andrew Coddling Medium or dot uh, com, or you can contact me on Andrew Coddling Medium and Tutor on Facebook, and obviously send me a private message if you wish to. Um, so I hope this has been of some um, help to those that don't really understand what trance is, and just a little example of how we can use it. But we can use trance to help us with our clairvoyance, with our healing as a psychic artist, um, with physical mediumship, um, you name it. Altered states and trance, I believe, are the center from where all other aspects of mediumship um, unfold. So I will leave it there. I'm going to stop the recording here and um, maybe I'll speak to you guys sometime soon. Take care and be kind to one another.